Okay, once again, welcome to Mental Health Mondays. My name is Miss Akins, and I represent the foundation of Better Me. And someone on this in this group tonight spoke about love. So um, that's the focus of where I'm going at today. We're going to revisit love and how we could plant more love in ourselves and in others. My screen not moving. Let me minimize it. Okay. We already signed in, right? Everybody signed in and put their information in the chat. Can you all see this? Oh. Yes, we can see it. All right, sign in by placing your name in the chat. And if you're still in school, your grade and your school. If you graduated already, just put the um, school you graduated from in the chat with your name. I'm trying to move this out the way. All right. So I'm going to keep moving. We already did the check-in. Ms. Jasmine did the check-in. So mo mostly everyone was feeling fine. People were feeling in love. Somebody felt um, happy. Somebody felt that they were a little under the weather. So we sent our prayers to you, Michaela, that you feel better. Okay. The model for a better me is each day, as far as I can see, I strive to become a better me. You have the circle um, rotation in the chat. I yes, want you to think about this quote and I want you all to tell me what, by reading this quote and by listening to this quote, what does it mean to you? Each day, as far as I can see, I strive to become a better me. What's the circle flow? Can you go over the circle flow, Ms. Jasmine? Yes, ma'am. So um, the circle flow is, is uh, I, I started off after me is Miss uh, is Michaela, then Miss A Atkins, Miss Marlo, Auntie Joey, Little Jazz, Miss Ruth, Miss Anika, and then ending with Khalees. and Miss Antoinika because she just came into the um, group. Welcome, Antoinika. So each day, as far as I can see, I strive to become a better me. So the first name that you call, go ahead. Um, that was that would be me. Um, so for me, I the way it speaks to me is that there is something to to glean from each day. I feel like you should be able to walk um, into each day and walk out of it having gained something from it to take into tomorrow. That every day should, no day should be empty. No matter how left field we're thrown, we should be able to say, but I get, like I grasped this or I gained this or I learned that and be able to take it with us. So no day should be a waste because every day is a gift. Yes. And that's what I took from that. And so after me would be Miss Michaela. <laughs> Um, from what I could get from it, I see um, no matter like if I wake up, if God, God bless me to wake, wake up another day, each day I become or do something I didn't do the day before. So if I made an impact with one person, the next day will be the goal to reach another person. So that's how I look at it. Yes. I'm next, right? Mm -hmm. So each day, as far as I can see, I strive to become a better me a better me as a person with myself, like treating myself better, treating the people that surround me better, um, doing what's best for me, like improving in my life, like paying off debt. So becoming better each day. That's what I look at each day. I need to start anew and don't worry about so much of the troubles of yesterday, but focus on improvements each day. And that's how you become a better person. That's what I got out of it. I really agree with you, Ms. Akins. That's where I was at also. When I read it as each day, as far as I can see, it's more so what's in front of me right now than meeting yes. myself where I'm at. Not even so much as tomorrow or a week from now, but right now, because um, that's what I can see and what I can do to make myself better 
as I'm meeting myself in this moment. So if today what I could bring to the table and bring to someone else is uh, just my kindness, that's what I'm going to bring. And then tomorrow it's a brand new start, like you said, and I can start anew. So you're right. We got to leave stuff in the yesterday. That was a good one. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I love this quote and it's so you and it's so everybody. And um, I think that this is what motivates me each morning for hope. And I, I and how I do that is that I'm always trying to pour and plant seeds and hear and meet people and love on them. Because like you said, love will take them nowhere. Then Miss Janie said, love will take people places that money won't. Yes, and, so, and I think that um, each day you do something good or kind or go through a pain that you becoming better when you when even when you fall down and you get back up you become better and after me was Jasmine. Um, so what I think I agree with Miss Jas I Miss Jasmine on like how like uh like for today. For example, what I learned today at school, I can bring it on and um, like, like bring it on to the next day. So, yeah. Um, and I think, oh, my mom was next. Um, so I think for me, one of the values that I hold um, very clear, dear to my heart is this value in Yoruba language um, from West Africa. It's called um, Iwapole, which is good or gentle character. Um, and so when I read this, it makes me think about Iwapole, that like even the days that we're not able to see, um, that we're able to always have good and gentle character because we never know like what somebody is going through and help we sometimes we don't even know what help we need for ourselves but the very fact that we can at least um kind of like have hope have like aspiration um and also like be good to ourselves and be good to other people um can help us to like move farther in life um rather than slowing down or seeing the traumas or the hurts that we that we experience or or go through um so this for me is like striving to be a better person a better me is like striving to have good and gentle character even when um i'm not able to see the full or the bigger picture yet and i am complete i'll pass Hi, Ms. Ruth, I'll take it. Thank you so much. Uh, This is Anika. So for me, I think Marlo described what I was thinking completely. It's really about being in this moment and not focusing on yesterday's or yesteryear's problem, but also not missing this current moment that you have uh, by putting energy and thought into tomorrow and, you know, the year to come. It's really about those opportunities and those uh, those those circumstances that present itself right then and there that you have the ability to focus on how to become a better you, not only for yourself, but also for the larger community that you live in. And so, um, Marlo, thank you so much for eloquently expressing uh, your thoughts. Yes. I mimic those. I think Elise. So Antoinica. Miss Antoinica, unfortunately, I think she left. I okay. don't see her. Kalise is gone as well. No, I think she's eating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to move on. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all so much for the insight on the quote um, from the uh, Better Me book. And that's where the lesson is coming from today. And you see the quote at the top of this book. So moving on, I don't know why my computer keeps getting stuck right there. 
Okay. Okay, Lily. Self love. Is it my turn? All right, Khalees. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, what's the question? What is self love? You can start it off. I feel like uh, self love isn't just saying that you love yourself. It's like um, you know how they say like actions speak louder than words. You definitely show that you love yourself if you say it, you do. But I I would say self love is um just you know taking care of yourself in every way, whether it be um, literally just getting up and taking care of what you need every day. I feel like that's self love. Okay. <laughs> it's Thank also for... self care. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Thank you. That was great. So, Miss Jasmine, um, self love. I like to look at self love as self forgive, self forgiveness. Um, I'm a big proponent that you know, as people, we as individuals, we are our biggest critic. We tend to be the hardest on ourselves. Um, everybody else would have forgiven, you know, us, but we haven't forgiven ourselves. So part of self love is really learning how to forgive ourselves and allowing ourselves to move past things and grow from them. And after me was Miss Michaela. <laughs> um. Self-love to me is everything as a whole because it could be your characteristics. It could be your passion. It could be anything you put your mind to. Like everybody say you have to have passion, but you also have to have love for something you do too within yourself and when you're doing things for other people. So that's how I look at self-love. Um, I forgot who was next after me. Me? How could you forget oh, me? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's just <Aiken>. aching. <laughs> So My to me, well. self-love is, besides the physical attributes um, of self-love, because I tell people all the time, I have a big head for a reason because I have a lot of knowledge up there. And some people, they don't accept the fact that they can have a big head and they go around waddling in that. So I love myself from my big head, which is my crown, to my feet, my long feet with corns on my toes. So that, that's self-love to me and followed by wrapped around in taking care of myself mentally, physically, emotionally. All of that to me is self-love. And after me is... It's me. Okay. Um, for me, self-love is loving myself as much as I love the person that I love the most. Um. Because for me, I love my daughter the most. And I used to live in this world, and I think I sometimes still do, where I would, I would cross the ocean for her. But then I wouldn't jump over a puddle for myself. And I would question every purchase. And I would question everything that I did for myself. And I realized, if I cannot love myself the same way that I love her, how can I truly love her? So, um, and also with self-love, I feel like it's accepting the things about yourself that you, that are flawed, that are unchangeable, that are just part of you, all the good parts of you. And also like meeting your, like back to the same thing of meeting myself where I'm at and letting go of things that no longer bring me purpose because you can't love yourself if you are holding on to things that don't bring you any any purpose don't help you grow it's kind of like self-harm in a way not physically but emotionally and mentally so and you wouldn't you wouldn't if you love yourself you wouldn't harm yourself yes yeah. that part how they said that part <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's beautiful i feel so encouraged like i'm having church on monday yes <laughs> praise <laughs> him <laughs> I had a hallelujah moment. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we don't talk about self-love, but I think it's showing grace and mercy because, you know, sometimes you can play that tape in your, your mind again. Oh, I made a mistake. I should have said, hey, I should have said this. I should have said that. Oh, my God, are you looking at me, right? And so I think self-love is having grace and mercy 
on yourself and loving yourself and doing things special for you. If you want an ice cream, eat it. Don't steal it, eat it. And so, you know, just rewarding yourself when it's appropriate and telling yourself the truth. So that's self-love and, you know, treat yourself well. After me was Jasmine. Um, I believe like self-love is like loving yourself and pushing like pushing yourself for your needs like uh, I don't know how to like pushing like pushing yourself to like take care of your own needs so like yeah I'm done <laughs> Yeah, I agree with Jasmine. Um, I think that that is definitely it. Is being able, the ability to say no, being able to meet your own needs, and whatever makes you happy is how you then express love to yourself. And uh, regardless of what people say or what they say. Thank you. I think it's Dante. Dante, okay. It was Miss, uh, after Miss Ruth, uh, Miss Anika, then Khalees, then Dante. Okay, Khalees went this round, okay. Okay, yes. Miss Anika and then Dante. And as well. Monika said something. <laughs> Dante. Okay, I'm glad you started because I was like, what? <laughs> Sorry, I went as well. I already went. Oh, okay, cool. No, Anika didn't say what is self love. <laughs> Go ahead, Dante. Um, self love to me is like healing from your trauma that that caused you when you was like teenage years and. That, hurt, that really hurt at you is like can from me and making a new life or making a new better you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> yes. So oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't answer the question. I apologize. So for <laughs> me, definition of self-love is still evolving. Um, I don't think I have a definitive answer, but what I have come to realize that for me, the self-love that I need now is the, is the ability to forgive myself and not feel responsible for other people's pain and hurt, especially if I didn't cause it. I know that as I interface and interact with people, that every one of us has baggage, but I have to have enough grace and mercy for myself as I do with others, right? Because I am no good to anyone if I am completely broken because I am weighed down by the, the trauma and baggage of others. So I, I don't think a week ago you would have gotten that answer from me. So it, it's, it's truly an evolving, um, you know, truth be told, I spent... Uh, not last week, but the week before in Atlanta at the Woman Dow Art Loose. Uh, oh, okay. The little loose people. Uh, <laughs> um, and, you know, and just some different perspective on just how I was approaching life and situations and relationships, right? So um, I, I am still a work in progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, has everyone gone? I saw iPhone come on. That's me, Ebony. Hi, you want to tell us what's your definition of self-love? Self-love? Yes. Taking care, taking care of yourself, feeling good about yourself. Mm, yeah. Okay, now we're gonna close out that part. Thank you all for sharing your definitions. As you can see, they were all inclusive of um, what we all were stating. Um, so I want you to take a moment and cut off your camera for a minute and just 
listen as I read a short poem. But um, when we come back on, you're just going to share any thoughts. And it's, it's not going to be a circle this time. Just share any thoughts that you may have after listening to this short poem. Self-love. When everything looks different and seems like it's not normal, don't fret and believe that you are abnormal. To be different shouldn't cause you no hurt or shame. Always be willing to win, stay ahead of the game. Your gifts and talents will make room for you. Truth and love should follow you through. When the road gets tough, stand very tall. Stand higher than your troubles, big or small. For trouble don't last always. You will get through. Believe in yourself starts by believing in you. You could cut your cameras back on now. And anybody want to share out? You could process it first. I'll give you a minute to think about what you want to share out is no particular order for this part. What stood out to me, Miss Atkins, is believing in you. You gotta always believe in you. <laughs> yes. Anybody else want to share out? Um, I agree with believing in you. Um, I would never thought I have no friends to talk to, like nobody to talk to. I don't, I don't have no friends at all. So my self love journey is really just healing, and I'm getting better, and I love it. I have nobody like nobody. I'm happy. Huh? I'll tell you, you have us always. I know we're not your age group, some of us, but Michaela is around your age. You have you have us, okay? Okay. <laughs> Anybody else wants to share out? Um, what I gained from it is recognizing or remembering that there's a power deep inside um, that we often forget to tap into because um, sometimes we are so focused on how weak we are that we forget just how strong we are. And so that's, that's at least what it was speaking to me to never forget that you're, you're, you're stronger than you remember. Wow. Wow. Uh, for me, what's, what I took from that is that self-love is not a thing you do. It's a state of mind. Yes. Yes. So anyone else wants to share? I'm going to read another poem. From, well, I'm going to let somebody else read another poem. And I hope I spelled everything right on this screen. Any volunteers to read this one? Love is the key. I was going to ask you all what is love, but can I I'll see read that? it. Wait, it's safe. Hold on. Um, did I admit everybody in the waiting room? Yeah, I know I'm multitasking here. It says somebody was waiting. I don't, I don't see anybody waiting anymore. Okay, how can I? Oh. All right, let me move this out of the way. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am. I'll take it from the bottom if you can't see that part because I don't know how to move it. Okay. Do I start? Yes. Love is the key. Love is the key and not hate. The previous line is not up for debate. On social media, so many people are dying. They are losing hope and desperation and crying, crying out to be loved, to feel wanted. Bullying, no support, makes them feel taunted. What happened to the love? This I want to know. 
Love is more than a dog and a pony show. Love heals a broken heart. Love must occur from the very start. Children need to be shown love. When they become adults, they will reach above so that generations after generations will have love too. If we love each other, it's not anything that we can't do. Thank you so much. So let me stop the share really quickly. Thanks for the heart. <laughs> so um, let's share out our thoughts again on, on that form. And we have to, um, should I show the screen again? Oh, you remember? No, you should show the screen again. I even read it. I still don't remember what I read. Come on, comprehension, baby. Comprehension. Khalees, um, can you see it? Can you read it for us again? Yes, Because this is what we're, it's a lot of this we're dealing with in society right now. I just want you to read this one again. All right. Mm -hmm. Love is the key and not hate. The previous line is not up for debate. On social media, so many people are dying. They are losing hope and desperation and crying, crying out to be loved, to feel wanted. Bullying, no support, makes them feel taunted. What happened to love, to the love? This I want to know. Love is more than a dog and a pony show. Love heals a broken heart. Love must occur from the very start. Children need to be shown love. When they become adults, they will reach above so that generations after generations will have love too. If we love each other, it's not anything that we can't do. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now I want to stop sharing because I want some thoughts on this one for real. Now, um, this poem was written um, over five years ago. And you see it's still relative to what's happening today. So give me some thoughts on it, please. Can I go? Oh, go ahead. Um, what I got from the poem is from what we see now in society that a lot of people grow up around hate. So now they're reflecting it inside our community. But if they grew up with love, then our communities wouldn't be suffering the way they are. That's all I got to say. Yes. Thank you. Marlo? That was great. That was great, Michaela. I love that. <laughs> um, what, I, what I took from it, especially that first line where it says love is the key. Um, and literally every single thing that came after that it was basically like, this is the answer. Love is the answer. Um, and with the part where it says it's not a dog and pony show, a lot of times um, people that don't know love, especially from the beginning, um, from the start, they don't know what that is and they don't know how to reciprocate it back to someone else. So love, love itself isn't fake. It's a genuine feeling. It's something that um, you can't hide behind because it's just simply what it is. Um, I feel that um, just as Michaela said, a lot of times like there is no love in the community because it's just not there. People, um, it starts at home. Like if, um, like it, it's kind of like a generational curse. I would look at it as if you didn't get that love at home, some people it's either they're gonna like show love tenfold or they're not gonna be able to show that love at all because they don't know what that is. They don't know how to love and they don't know how to express it. And if you don't know how to love and you don't know what love is, when someone gives you something, you're just gonna take it because you're assuming that's what love is. Um, there was a there was this poem that I read a while ago. It was just about how children, how you treat children. Um, and it says, if you treat a child a certain type of way from the very beginning, they're gonna interpret that as love because you are their parent and you're their first example of what love is. So if you don't care for them, you don't hug them, you don't kiss them, when they're out in the world, that's, somebody can treat them like that and they're gonna think, oh, I'm in love, this is love because that's how I was treated when I was growing up. But if you show your children from the start that genuine love, that yeah. I love you, like after, after God's love, it's my love for you. 
I love you in a way that like my child should know I would lay my life on the line for you. I will love you like over and beyond. So when the child goes out into the world, it's pretty much like, mm, that's not love because at my house, that's not what love was. But it's also showing your child how you love others because that's what your child is going to show and that's how they get other stuff too because if you're showing you're disrespecting your spouse you're disrespecting your family you're disrespecting everybody around you that's also what love is to them yes so oh yes. I'm going to be a fake friend I'm going to be a fake family member because that's what my mom does she gossips about all her friends so that's it's just all about the example of what our love is and it's just going to continue to grow if we make those good examples Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else wants to share? Yeah, okay. I want to say that 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 poem hit home because a lot of people they want to be seen and heard and when the conflict comes mm -hmm. it's when people disrespect um one another because they feel like somebody has taking their voice or, or minimize or disrespect them. And most of this stuff in the community comes for when there's a disagreement, when, you know, people just want to be loved. And, you know, even we, as young children, you know, you can recall situations where you had a problem with a sibling or you didn't get treated well by your grandma because she had favoritism for Uncle Johnny's, um, child and you know and so all of those harms you know they come with you when you become an adult and so I'm glad for the poem is because it makes me appreciate and bring awareness to what I can do for today and show grace and mercy like you all said and have some type of remorse for myself and understanding and like Ruth said it's that character you know and bringing that value. So I appreciate the poem because that's relevant to what's going on and I can do my part to help heal or hold somebody in that, that high regard. And thank you for sharing it. Hi, Shania. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So the question that we should ask ourselves every day, is love a part of your everyday life? Think about this. Is love a part of your everyday life? If you, are you showing love? Are you being kind to others? Are you trusting others? Are you being helpful? Are you being obedient? Think about this. You know, and I know some people that wake up with hate on their hearts every day. They have a lot of hate on their heart and they, they're ready to destroy the world on a daily basis. And they wake up with that same attitude every day. Sessions like this help, right? I get a lot of healing from doing sessions like this because I realize I'm dealing with my own trauma as an adult, right? I'm still dealing with my own trauma. That's why I write about my trauma. I write to help relieve the pain that I'm going through because I know my pain and my writing can help someone else, right? And, and um, with that being said, we're gonna move because you have journals. Well, most of you have your journals, not all. Anybody want to say something till we move to our um, before we move to our closing activity? No? Okay, so your journal should be ready. And so you're going to write a poem or a letter to a loved one. It's going to be short. Don't say, oh, she has us writing. Y'all know that's the teacher in me. You're going to write a poem or a letter to a loved one. And when I was doing this exercise, I just thought about something. I would prefer if you wanted to write a letter to someone you're asking for forgiveness to. Think about someone you haven't spoken to. It could be that family member because... Don't act like we all in perfect families, okay? So think about if you wanna write a poem or a letter to a loved one, you could do that. But think about somebody you wanna ask forgiven, forgiveness for. Because is love a part of your life every day? 
Think about this. So we're going to take only seven minutes because it doesn't take a long time to write a paragraph. A paragraph is fine. And you don't have to share if you don't want to. If you want to share, you can share. I know Michaela probably say, I'd rather draw a picture. So draw your picture. We cater to all learners, Michaela. So if you want to draw a picture, draw a picture that expresses love or forgiveness, okay? And I'm going to give everybody seven minutes. I'm going to play um, a song in the background if I'm new to this computer right here while you all are thinking about um, your poem. You have your journals, Miss Joey. A lot of them have their journals already, right? Yep. If they can show it, they can just show them. Show those yeah. journals. Show your journals. Mine in the comments, Joey. I'm going to run again. I got eight <laughs> minutes. Yes, I have eight eight minutes. Oh, Afrina Musa, Judy's journals, each individual picture. She's the art minister. Y'all right, you got yours, Sante. Good. And for those that didn't, you know, we can get you one and mail it out to you. She told me, pray over these journals, Miss Joy, and make sure these children get these journals and that they do what they can do with them. And, and I just wanted her to know that you have them and they are gifted to the right people, individuals. Yes, they're beautiful. Okay, I'm going to, let me try to play this song while we, we got um, seven minutes. Seven minutes, so 6.31, I'll come back on. Um, to tell it to share the sound. Okay, let me see the time. One more minute, perfect timing. You, need to, you gotta turn in your track paper tomorrow. What happened? Oh, she's talking to her daughter. All right, so I'm gonna start sharing out, I'll share out first. Um, my letter is like for someone I love and also asking for forgiveness. Today is my father's 94th birthday. Yeah, he would have been 94 years old today, believe it or not, right? So, it's my daddy's birthday. I love him. I miss him. 
I miss him so much. I, I miss him really a, a, a lot. He would have been 94 years old today. He was a great man. I have done things I know that he wouldn't approve of and I'm asking God for forgiveness and healing. Set me on the right path and continue to let my light shine is what I'm asking for today. Because each day, as far as I can see, I still strive to become a better me. Thank you all. So um, the next person can go. Um, I'm gonna go. Okay, so it's a letter to my mom. Hold on. Okay, so it's my letter. It's, it's my mom. Um, you know, Dear mom, you will always be my hero, my mentor, and my blanket. I wish that I had I wish that I had always did the right thing, make you even more proud of me. I often simply wish to take away your pains, but I know that isn't something that you would have wanted. I know you didn't know that I, how I watched you struggle and strive to give me the best that you could and how you took one look at me and my sister and wanted to change your life around for you and for us. There, and I will forever spend my life sharing with the world what you gave me. And that's We're going to just hop, jump on if you want to say it, because I know everybody may not want to speak out, but just jump in right now. Popcorn, popcorn, popcorn. Pop in. I'll go. go Wait, ahead, I just came back. Oh. What's happening? Khalees. <laughs> I just came back. What happened? Just I listen now. Happened. Just listen. All right. All right. All right. Go ahead, Marlo. <clears throat> um, the letter I wrote, honestly, was for me. It was to my younger self. And I, I want to apologize to you for every moment that I told you you were not good enough. For every time that I let an anxious mind trick you into thinking we were not going to survive the storm. Despite every obstacle, I want you to know that there is a happy ending. There is so much more than what you can see in this single lens that you're looking through. I also forgive you for the pain and being angry for lack of directions and our lack of a plan. But I'm sorry that I rushed us for not taking the time to enjoy the moments that mattered. And I also apologize for letting fear hold you back. Wow, that was deep as well. Awesome. Anyone else wants to share? Okay. Um, thank you all for allowing me to be here today. I really appreciate you all. And I truly enjoy it myself. And this is a part of the healing process. Thank you, Sanaya. Miss Joey, should I start recording? Yeah, you can't. Well, you, you, anybody want to tell before you stop sharing? I want to thank you, Miss um, Akins, and everybody's here, and Jasmine for the for the vision, right, of doing this. And um, I'm I'm very full with love right now, um, with gratitude from all you guys and and how you did this, and so. Um, I'm just thankful, and I and that's all I can say right now. And I would like for you all to say something too, if you want to. Um, I just wanted to say that I thank Miss Akins for holding this session today. Um, at the end of of it all, Mental Health Mondays really is about learning to love in all aspects of what that encompasses. And I think today's session has been one that has really touched deep um, for each and every one of us. It really has caused us not to just learn, but to stop and reflect. Because I think there's more to just learning, but it's reflecting upon something so that we can take it into tomorrow and use it to better ourselves. And I think that's something that um, is very detrimental in what we're trying to accomplish here on Monday evenings is about taking what we've learned throughout the week, bring it back, reflect upon it, learn something and see how we can become better for it. And so um, you gave us, you gave us 
quite a handful of opportunities to stop and think and reflect on what we're showing ourselves and what we're showing others and what our intent and purposes are. Um, and are we doing it not in a wrong or right way, but are we doing it in the most effective way possible? Um, and I thank you for that. Um, and the thank you for the time and the space that um, you gave of us, gave us of yourself. Um, thank you. I told Miss Jody earlier, I was like, Miss Ms. 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 Atkins is really a, a, a true teacher at heart. And teachers are, I believe, and I tell everybody I know that, you know, I just said, listen, teaching is a calling. It's not just, oh, I, I like it. It's, 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 it's a calling for me. Yes, yes. And so um, I enjoy uh, holding this space with you. I, I truly learn from you every time I'm in your presence. And that's why I thank Aww. you. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you. Dante, you in the chat, you said you wanted to say something? My poem. Um, okay, it's coming straight from the heart, though. <laughs> but I thought I, was, I thought I said, hello, my name is Dante. My mama named me Dante for a reason. God made me walk and talk, walk and talk and stand for a reason. I know I'm handsome and handsome and bright in my own different type of ways and love myself more and I have more levels to touch just to begin it. Thank you. Thank you, Dante. Appreciate you so much. Um, <laughs> anything else so we could close out? I'm turning it back over to Collective Sisterhood and Jasmine. So now I got my motions together and my, my speech together. Kalise, you want to say something? I see your, your thing, please. <laughs> I wanted to say something, but I'll wait for you, Miss Joey. No, go on, baby. You first. You first. Well, I was just trying to say I, I appreciate like myself for even like realizing that I have I have time to better myself I mean like I hope I live long but like I rather I rather live now oh I love you oh yeah God. I just realized I I wasn't giving up on myself but I was definitely just oh life yes I life. know like, we had those conversations yeah so I'm but glad I, you're doing like, better the sisterhood it, it allows me to well I still speak my mind rather always <laughs> tell me not to speak but I just I just realized um I don't have to like be so hard on myself I, I have two more years until I'm out of high school I'll be fine I'll be fine I know I'll be fine because I'm beautiful, beautiful. And, and, you're I beautiful. and you beautiful <laughs> Baby, Thank nobody you. ever tell you, baby, you are a heart stopper, dropper. You, Jasmine, Michaela, Shania, Milo, and, and Dante, and Miss Ebony, yeah, okay? Don't let nobody fool you, okay? You got it going Yeah, on. Yeah, I love this space, too. Y'all, like, y'all make me so warm-hearted, just listening to everything. Mm -hmm. We don't play about nobody on this live, and any of your friends, we, we'll come for you. Will come to that. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. thank you, Ms. Akins, for inviting me and being my mentor. Oh, I love you. I told you I love you. And Miss Joey just said you're beautiful. And I told you that maybe what four or five weeks ago when you had those braids. I said, girl, you so beautiful. She is Miss Joey. So yeah. thanks for confirming it too. I'd mm. rather have my natural hair. I know. I, I already know what you love. I don't, I don't, I don't. I You're don't still beautiful. That. You're still beautiful. It doesn't matter. <laughs> for yeah, picture yeah. day, that was it. I would have worn You just say thank you. Day. You just say thank you. Say thank, thank you, guys. You. There you go. Marla going to teach you how to say thank you. That's it. <laughs> okay, I think that's it, Miss Joey. Yeah, so one word, check out, and we going to go. Unless y'all ready to go now. It's late, ain't it? Say it at one time if you want to. One, two, three. Love. Love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. Good night, everyone. Good night. All right, you all. Check your emails now. 